Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So today we are moving away from Star Wars Battlefront 2 drama, although I will say I continue to be bummed that the launch of the game went so poorly. I wanted to do a video on all the ships featured in the game because there are some weird ones like the Victory 2 class frigate, but I did end up refunding the collection. However, if it's something you guys want to see, maybe I'll consider it. Anyway, we had an interesting hashtag ask at question from Saved by God's Grace, which formed the basis for today's video. They asked, do you plan to make a video on the differences and similarities between Mount Tantus and Legends compared to canon once the Bad Batch finishes? No, because I plan to do that right now. And if you're wondering why people were so excited when Mount Tantus showed up in the Bad Batch and also so surprised, this is probably a good video for you. Mount Tantus first appears in Heir to the Empire, which is book one of the original Thrawn trilogy. Thrawn himself travels there. He encounters Jorah Sabaoth, the guardian of Wayland and Mount Tantus, and we learn later, a deranged Jedi clone, and he travels to Mount Tantus itself. Now, as a bit of clarity at this point, Wayland is the name of the planet, Mount Tantus is the name of both an actual mountain, but also the common name for the Emperor's storehouse within that mountain. So, first off, I'll give a brief overview of what happens in the trilogy, and Mount Tantus itself is actually crucial for Thrawn's campaign against the New Republic. If you haven't read the series, in short, Thrawn returns to the known galaxy, as he does in Star Wars canon, and by the way, you'll probably start at this point to see a few connections between canon and legends, but Thrawn is extremely underpowered. The Empire has fractured and he's facing off against a fairly unified and growing new Republic, so he's forced to fight more of an indirect and a clever war. The first thing we really see Thrawn do is attack Abroa Sky. He uses the archives of that library world to find the location of Mount Tantus itself, which he travels to, finding two vital assets, the first being experimental cloaking tech, which figures into the early and mid parts of his campaign especially, and more importantly, a store of over 20,000 Sparty cloning cylinders. Now, you have to keep in mind that the Thrawn trilogy came out before the Clone Wars, so they didn't know what the Clone Wars were, whether the clones were the good guys or the bad guys, it was assumed the bad guys, and they certainly didn't know that the Kaminoans existed. Sparty cloning was different than what we'd see later on. Like, if you imagine the Kaminoans, Finding 20,000 cloning vats doesn't seem like a big deal. You still need to wait almost a decade, and in that time, you could produce 20,000 soldiers and other means. Sparty cloning, however, used a method where normally clones could be grown in a year using flash memory and accelerated process. Thrawn, however, found a way to cut that down to 15 days. The clones were based on a variety of templates, including, for example, Suntir Fell, meaning that he was producing highly qualified and specialized soldiers, which he could fit into various roles within his growing military. Sparty clones generally were still less effective than Kaminoan clones. The Republic and Empire actually used both. There is a section on that in the Essential Guide to Warfare. I believe I've covered it in a past video. But anyway, Mount Tantus itself, as well as Thrawn's cloning operation, is destroyed in the final battle of the campaign by Luke and Mara. That's the basic overview of the story. There is actually more lore, both within and without the trilogy. One of the most interesting elements elements of Mount Tantus for me is the idea of the Emperor's Guardian. So Mount Tantus was one of Palpatine's most secret storehouses, and Palpatine actually assigned a Dark Jedi to guard the planet. We don't know a whole lot about that Dark Jedi. There's confusion about this. Some assume that it's actually Jorah Sabaoth, but it seems like instead Sabaoth killed that Dark Jedi, then took his place. We really don't know a whole lot about Sabaoth's backstory, which is interesting considering he's one of the first and arguably most famous major villains of the expanded universe. Wayland was actually a really good choice for Palpatine's storehouse. As the Thrawn trilogy source book explains, the planet and its people were, due to a logging error, largely forgotten by the greater galaxy. Palpatine probably arrived at some point in the Imperial era, although it could have been something like in Star Wars canon where he had an early base there during the Clone Wars, which I'm guessing is probably what happened, just due to how quickly things are set up and then really moved moved assets there when he became emperor, but unlike in canon, Wayland was less of a major active research facility and really just a storehouse that Palpatine used for some of his rare artifacts. It wasn't actively used for cloning, at least as far as we know, during the Imperial era. He had other locations doing that. The physical description of Mount Tantus is pretty similar. I'll read again from the source book. Centuries later, when the planet was rediscovered by the Empire, the Emperor paid a personal 
annual visit to the world, he liked what he found. He ordered all records of the planet's discovery to be stricken from permanent records. Then he had one of his personal storehouses built. The Imperial engineers hollowed out Mount Tantus, one of the largest peaks on the planet, and set up a maze of internal defenses. So, yeah, built into a mountain, highly secure, removed from records, pretty similar. Canon does seem to be missing the Dark Jedi, but maybe they'll add that in later. Maybe it'll be Asajj Ventress. One unfortunate aspect in universe is that because Mount Tantus was destroyed, a lot of the theories about the base's past are unexplored. For example, the source book mentions the fact that the cloning facility may have actually existed in some form at Mount Tantus or nearby before the Emperor discovered it. Here's another quote. Unfortunately, the origin of the cloning chambers cannot be conclusively proven due to the damage done by the blast. However, the debates that occurred between the various New Republic scientists and archaeologists present at the Mount Tantus facility have been lively to say the least. The idea that the base at Mount Tantus is not necessarily an imperial construct is a tantalizing mystery. So I guess in that sense, the Emperor would have taken something that was already there and added extra imperial security. If Cannon were to run with this idea, it would actually help explain why Mount Tantus was so prepared even early on after the Clone Wars. Perhaps it was simply a cameo known facility, maybe even a secret one, that Palpatine commandeered. Although, based on what we've seen of the Kaminoans there, I don't know if that theory would necessarily make sense. The actual mountain itself, by the way, is a little more incognito in Star Wars Legends. Like, it basically looks like a mountain without the major trenches cut out, although there were several hangars and entrances. The way Luke, Mara, and others enter the mountain is through a large air intake. Palpatine also had within Mount Tantus a secret throne room, and you can see from a cross section of the mountain that despite its unassuming appearance, it's actually a fairly substantial installation. And this is somewhat strange because, again, we know that they weren't really using it very much. At times, it almost seems like practicing excess. Like, Palpatine created a very advanced base of operations here. The source book talks about the computer in Mount Tantus, the sophisticated setup he had for mapping and intelligence, but we know it wasn't really used. Really, Palpatine left the perfect gift for Thrawn, this massive, well-secured, unknown base, and in hindsight, it's kind of surprising that Thrawn didn't take a moment to build up his power before actually assaulting the New Republic, especially while well, he was still not widely known across the galaxy, but I guess hitting fast, securing assets like the Katana fleet was all part of his plan. Anyway, if you're interested more in like the physical layout of the mountain itself, the source book, which obviously is designed to help a dungeon master run a Star Wars RPG gives details about everything from the vault layout to the air intake shaft to the specific number of med bays and back to tanks and one of my favorite bits the layout of the cloning chamber itself. One of my favorite aspects sort of hidden at the end of the section is about the labyrinth under Mount Tantus. It's suggested that there are catacombs kilometers below the planet and it says inexplicably that scans of the area return different pictures of the maze each time they're recorded, suggesting that the labyrinth is somehow changing. And then, I quote, It is unknown how to access these areas, although it is assumed that there was some sort of a hidden turbo lift. What is unknown to the New Republic is that both the labyrinth and the hidden crypt below it were secretly constructed by Palpatine. Palpatine made every effort to hide the existence of these areas, including the silencing of work crews that built these hidden chambers. It is unknown exactly what these chambers serve. So a very fun adventure for a creative deal there. So if you've been watching The Bad Batch by this point, you can probably pick out the similarities and the differences between Mount Tantus and Wayland in both Legends and Canon. For one, we don't know if Wayland is inhabited. In Canon, there are the human colonists as well as two different alien species, the Minersh and the Pazdan. They were all controlled and dominated by Jorah Sabaoth, who took up role as basically emperor on the planet. Don't think anything like that exists in Canon. Although, to be honest, after the fall of the Empire, who knows what's happened? We've only seen Mount Tantus at its peak, which is interesting because it's the exact opposite of Star Wars Legends, where we only see it in that, like, recovered by Thrawn or post-recovered by Thrawn state. In both Legends and Canon, Mount Tantus has significant research and cloning facilities, although in Legends it seems like they were prepared but never highly used, at least by Palpatine. In Canon, Mount Tantus seems to be the home of the Empire's most secret research, less than a sort of private repository for things. But again, there's a lot that could change. Now, how will Mount Tantus play into the future of Star Wars? Well, hopefully, the Bad
Bad Batch was planned to connect with other series and Mount Tantus will play into Ahsoka and that sort of associated media, but as of yet, we don't know. Anyway, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. That's all I got. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.